Good morning, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I want you to know it feels so good to be standing behind this desk on this morning. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, I was saying to the prayer group this morning, oh, that old enemy, he was trying to get me, trying to get me with this cold. And I thought about it. And I said, you know what? God allows things to happen for a reason. Yes. And I tried to blame it on the enemy, but I said, you know what? This was God's way of telling me, why don't you slow down? Amen. Okay. I preached about slowing down before. You know, you hear it and it sounds good, and then two weeks later you forget you preached it. And um, I've been running strong, I really have. And I uh, thank God that my hands aren't idle, but every now and then, you really do need to stop and sit back and rest yourself. And so there was a day this week where I didn't even get out of the bed. Mm. I got out of the bed to use the, the facilities, and that was it. Mm. My loving husband made sure that I got Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> all I wanted was some, all I wanted was some wonton soup, and he came home with the wonton soup, and I ate that, and he fed himself, and. I didn't worry about cleaning up after him afterwards, praise God. But um, I have to tell you, today I feel so much better than I did last week. And I missed my family, amen. amen. Nobody can tell me that we don't belong together and that we're not connected. Because when I don't see you guys, there's a void. There really is. And it's not filled until I lay my eyes on each and every one of you. Amen. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, too, before I get started. Um, I said to the bishop on the way to church this morning, I have butterflies about this message because it's not an easy message. It's not going to be an amen, hallelujah, whole lot of foot stomping and clapping and what have you. Um, what was the, the title of the segment in the Bible that you had this morning, Pastor David, a lesson in disobedience? Um, and truly that's what this is. But we don't know when we're obedient if we don't know what disobedience is, amen. Mm, right. And so we're going to take a little trip this morning. Uh, the title of my message, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, is The Road to Endor. The Road to Endor, which is the end of the road, mm -hmm. amen. Um, we read from the scripture this morning uh, from 1 Samuel chapter 28. We read verses 1 through 16, but in your hearing right now from the English Standard Version, I'm going to read verses 4 through 16. Amen? Amen. So just indulge me for a moment. And the word of God says that the Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, mm -hmm. either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, behold, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other garments, and went, and, he, and went with two men, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, divide for me a spirit, and bring up for me whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the necromancers from the land. Mm -hmm. Why then are you laying a trap for my life? Amen. To bring about my death. Praise God. Excuse me for a moment. You know, I'm still nursing this little thing. And uh, the people of God make sure I get what I need. Amen. 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 Thank God for the mothers and the deacons of the church. Amen. Amen. Um, verse number 12. Excuse me, 11. Verse 10, I'm sorry. But Saul swore by her, swore to her by the Lord. As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? He said, bring up Samuel for me. 
When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he said to her, what is his appearance? And she said, an old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed his face to the ground and paid homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress. Hmm. For the Philistines are warring against me, mm -hmm. and God has turned away from me and answers me no more either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? All right. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word on this morning. Amen. By way of introduction, we see a broken and pitiful man as he trudges down the road to Endor, to a witch and to certain death. The man that we see here is King Saul. And let me say this to you. He ran this race well. He began well. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he never gave himself completely to God. You can't finish well unless you give yourself completely to God. Amen. Because he was never fully converted, he had gotten to a place where he asked for someone to contact God for him. How do you ask the ungodly to contact a holy God? Truly, he was at the end. He started off on this road to endure which was the road to his end. Mm. Because he was never fully converted, he always held out a part of himself from the Lord for selfish reasons. Now, let me just take a moment in your hearing this morning and talk about this conversion. Because I want you to understand that conversion is a very important thing. Amen? Amen. Let me give you Webster's dictionary uh, definition of the word conversion. The word conversion means it's an act of converting as in one, the process of being converted, or two, an experience associated with the definite and decisive adoption of a religion or doctrine. Amen. Words that mean the same as conversion are changeover, metamorphosis, transfiguration, and transformation. Now, I want you to know, I got deep into this word conversion. I went to my Roger thesaurus of the Bible, okay? Because I wanted to make sure I was telling you the right thing. So we've said what Webster says it means. Let's see what the Bible says conversion means. The Bible says that conversion means to change into something or someone different. Amen? Right. And it gives us several scriptures here, which I'm not going to read, but we're talking about people being changed. So you cannot say that you have a God experience mm -hmm. if you're still the same. Right. You cannot have an encounter with the Lord Jesus through salvation, through the new birth, and be the same. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us that the old man has passed, passed away. away. Mm -hmm. And behold, all, all things, things become new. new. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, our memory is not erased, and we remember what the old man did, but if you're not striving to do something different than what the old man used to do, mm -hmm. maybe you need to ask if you've been fully converted. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Jesus said this very same thing to Simon Peter. You see, Simon Peter was about to betray Jesus, even though he was his biggest advocate. Amen. Remember, Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross. And Peter said, Lord, I will die with you. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Have you ever wondered why the Lord said that to Simon? Because in that one statement that might sound good to the human ear, he was denying 
what Jesus had to go through. And he was fooling himself into thinking that he was something that he was not. Oh Amen. Amen. Jesus said to him in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that your faith fails not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. We see here that word converted once again. I want you to understand what Jesus was saying to Simon Peter was that you have gone off the wrong track. Mm -hmm. The enemy desires to use you right now, not just you, but the rest of the disciples too. But once you have seen the error of your ways, oh be converted, yeah. repent, and turn back, back to me. Yeah. That's what that meant. Yes. Because you're getting ready to go off track of everything that I've taught you. But once you come back to yourself, oh once you repent, once you turn back to me, what do we say repentance is? Turning away from the sin and turning to, to God. God. And that's what Jesus was saying. When you turn away oh, from this sin of thinking that you're so much, you so great, you're going to die with me. Right. You can't drink what's in my cup. No. And when you recognize your sin, of being haughty enough to believe your own press. Mm -hmm. When you turn back to me, understand that I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Once you have seen the error of your ways, you can go and encourage your brothers because this thing is going to happen to me. Yes, it is. And they're going to get discouraged and they're going to be down in the dumps. And you're going to realize that before this rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. The very one that's standing here telling me, I'll die with you. He said, when you recognize that you've gone down the wrong road, mm. when you've started down indoor, but you get back on the right track, mm. you come back and strengthen your brothers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So now we, we got a concept of what this converted means. Amen. Converted, we use now and we say that, oh, that means that somebody has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and they, they've, turned, they've changed their lives. You know? But what converted means is that once you go off, because you will go off again. Right. That you recognize that you're on the wrong road and you turn away from that thing mm -hmm. and turn back, back to God. To Get back on track. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Get back on track. The biblical definition of converted means to repent and to turn back or turn to God. Jesus told Simon Peter this because he knew that he was going to be disheartened by what was about to happen. Amen. Okay. And you see that he was about to deny even knowing Jesus. Amen. Jesus knew this because Jesus knew his heart. And he was willing to pray for Peter's faith to be increased. Mm -hmm. And that once his faith was increased, he would go back and strengthen his brother. You can't strengthen me if your faith is not where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. How are you going to encourage me if you don't believe the words coming out your mouth? My God. Amen. You can't witness to me if you don't believe what you're saying. My God. And this is why I believe that we can't catch the young people and draw them in the way that we should. Amen. And I'm getting a little off track because they recognize when we're not being authentic. Amen. Right. right. Listen, don't be trying to sell me that pig in the pope. You want to stand here and read all your lofty words out the Bible? Don't tell me about you. What did Jesus do for you? Amen. 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 Yeah. Don't tell me about 2,000 years ago. Tell me about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We want to come off like we know everything. No, give some examples for today. The principles have not changed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But don't be trying to trick them and tell them all kinds. And please, by God, don't tell people, oh, why don't you come to the Lord Jesus? Everything is going to be wonderful. Uh, do not lie to me. Well, eventually. The deacon got up here this morning and told you, in this life, my God, that thing is ringing in my spirit. You shall suffer. For his sake. Yes. And remember, the, the apostles counted it all joy to suffer for the sake of Christ. Yes. And so should we. Without the murmuring and the complaining. Amen. Because when we get to the place of murmuring and complaining, I can guarantee you, you're going to stay there until you get it right. Okay. Amen. Amen. Even in the midst of the storm, we are to thank God because the storm will pass. Mm. We have the knowledge that it's not going to always be raining. Praise God. Amen. 
And if you know it's not going to always rain, you got to know it's not going to always be sunny. Either. Yeah. But in everything, give thanks. Give thanks. Yes. For this yes. is the will, will of God yeah. concerning you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give thanks. So let's get back to King Saul on this trip that none of us want to go on. We can see from Saul's actions that he was never fully persuaded to live his life for the Lord. Never. I dare say there are people like that in the world today who have the appearance, the Bible says, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. My God. You may not be able to tell them from one Christian or another. They got it all down pat. They got all the churchianity. They know when to stand up. They know when to wave their hands and say hallelujah. They know how to sing every word to every song. They know how to hoop and holler back at the preacher. And they have no power. Jesus. The Lord said he'll know you by your fruit. Right. So if you can hear all of this, but you don't see anything going on in their lives that would say that they truly follow the Lord, that's time for you to be a fruit inspector. Mm. What the fruit look like? Amen? Right. Because you can't be planting apple seeds. And I see oranges coming up. Something is wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Who, Father. And it's okay to inspect fruit. Because we can't stand back and say, oh, that person's not saved. Or that person is saved. That's between them and God. Amen. But God has given us the wisdom to be able to look at their fruit. Amen. Yes. And if you see that they're not bearing the kind of fruit that they, that their seeds our saying should be coming up. Pray for him. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we get back to Saul. Saul had it all together as far as looking like he knew the Lord. But he was never fully persuaded to give it all over to God. Do you understand this morning you can't give the Lord a little bit? Mm -hmm. You can't give God the pieces that you want him to have and then you keep the rest. We have to be fully surrendered, fully submitted. If not, you will go through life always trying to do it yourself, never quite accomplishing the thing. Amen? But when you give it all to God, you can give it to him and say, your will be done. Right. And the changes will come, amen? Right. You might not like the changes. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I think that's what's so hard for some of us to give it all over because we want the changes to come the way we want we the want changes it. to come. Yes. We don't want the changes to come the way the Lord might bring the changes. Right. But he made us and he knows what's best for okay. us, amen? I, I dare say we don't know what's good for ourselves. Okay. Amen. Okay. All right. But well, we wouldn't find ourselves in the mess that we always wind up in. Oh, my. The Bible says... That he continued to lean on his own understanding. Oh but I hear Proverbs say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean and up. lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, Absolutely. seek him yes. and acknowledge him. And he will show you the path to take. Okay. I guarantee you the Lord will not put you on the path to Endor. Which is the end of the road. Right. Amen. Right. Apparently, King Saul was not trusting in the Lord with all of his heart. Surely, he was not doing things God's way, or he would not have been on the road to Endor to see the witch. Mm -hmm. He wasn't off to see the wizard. He was off to see the witch. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't skipping down the road in ruby slippers doing it either. Amen? Right. Mm -hmm. He did some things God's way. And he did some things his way. His way. But guess whose way is the right way? Oh, right. Amen. Now, Endor is a town in Israel which still exists today. Amen. Right. The cliffs behind this little town are full of caves where it's possible for witches to live. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I want y'all to understand this morning that witches are real. Mm -hmm. And people deal with them or their craft every day. Mm -hmm. But they always live in Endor. I don't care where you find the witch. Wherever you find the witch, that's Endor. Endor. Amen. 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 The road to Endor, brothers and sisters, is generally long and full of signposts. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, I don't know how I got on this road. 
or I don't know where I am, because there's a big old sign telling you you're on your way to Endor. Amen? Right. Mm. The road to Endor has signposts, and it usually takes you years to get there. My God. You don't wake up this morning and start to Endor, and by nightfall, you're there. It usually takes you a while. Remember a couple of weeks ago I told you you don't fall into sin. Nope. You're seduced Loose. into sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it takes a long time before that sin manifests. So nobody can stand there and tell you, oh, you know what? I don't know what happened. It, it just happened. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. It did not just happen. You're just willing to recognize that it's happening. But it didn't just happen. My God. Amen. Amen. Mm. It takes years. But once you get to Endor, you can't get out. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand that Endor is not a place that anybody sets out to go. Maybe you don't consider consulting your horoscope on a daily basis, or reading tarot cards, or tea leaves, or reading something as innocuous as a fortune cookie, as going to Endor. But it is. Amen? It is. Anything that purports to tell you the future and what the future holds other than the word of God is a trip right. and a road map to Endor. Yes. And I pray I'm not boring anybody no. up in here this morning. No. I'm you what you need to know. Because, you know, we find ourselves falling into these things and, and, and we do it and we say it's purely innocent. Yeah. You know, I talked about the Chinese food this morning. Mm -hmm. I, I eat the Chinese cookies, but I don't read those little pieces of paper that come in them. Amen. Because right. that's a very subtle way for you to say, oh, let me see what my fortune is. I know what my fortune is. I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, um, even when we use fortune cookies here one time, we had a Chinese-themed Valentine's Day. We put scriptures in the cookies. cookies. Because that's your fortune. Yeah. That's your future. Amen. 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 Um, it may seem innocent, but it's witchcraft. It is the occult. It is a door leading to that. Amen. And you will find that all of these things will lead you to endure. Oh, but thank God the Father loves us. Amen. Mm. Amen. He told us in his word that he wouldn't have us be ignorant to the devices of the enemy. All right. Amen. However, sometimes we take these things so lightly and we don't pay any attention to the warning signs at all. And I want you to know that that's what the devil wants. He wants you to say, oh, I don't listen to the pastor. How much harm could a fortune cookie? Mm -hmm. how, much, how much trouble could you get into playing with the Ouija board? Mm -hmm. How much trouble could you have shaking the little egg ball and asking it questions? Mm -hmm. You know, the pastor's exaggerating. It, show me, it don't say that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yes. Why do you think God said in Leviticus, suffer not a witch to be among you? Right. If you were caught in witchcraft, that meant death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even Saul, my God, how did he end up on the road to Endor? Even Saul had outlawed it. And still he found himself so on the road right in the to Endor, yeah. going to see a witch. Amen. Right. These little disobediences, these little acts of rebellion, mm -hmm. put you right on the road to Endor. Yes. Amen. Yes. The enemy of your soul depends on it. I told you that this was not going to be a feel-good message. Mm -hmm. A message nonetheless. Amen. Amen. Because let me tell you how you end up in indoor and everybody within the sound of my voice. Because you are careless towards your attitude and your walk with God. Yes. Yes. That's how yes. you end up on the road to Endor. Yes. I don't care if you like me saying it. I don't care if you love it. You can like it or you can lump it, as we used to say. But I'm trying to help somebody this morning, All right. those listening too. You know, you cannot be cavalier about this Your walk. Pleasure. This thing is serious. Yes. Jesus died. Somebody died so you could take this walk. Yes. Don't treat the blood of Christ lightly. Amen. Your own carelessness, your own sense of being cavalier, your own sense of knowing everything puts you on the road to Endor. You see, 
sisters and brothers, Endor is a place of ending. It's even in the name, Endor. It is a place of endings. It is a place of rebellion and disobedience. Mm. And it's a place of regret. Mm. Nobody wants to go to Endor. Amen. Amen. Endor signifies endings. Adjective, could you please give me on the front bench there, purple towel. Thank you. Endor signifies that you have reached the end of your life. It is not a place from which anybody returns. It is not a jumping off point for other destinations. When you get to Endor, that's it. Whoo, great God from glory. By the time you reach Endor, you have been down so many roads and visited so many places. Life is lived on the road towards God or on the road towards Endor. No ifs, ands, or buts. You're going one way or you're going the other. There is no middle of the road. No gray areas no. in the word of God. By the time you reach Endor, your passport is full of stamps. Uh. <laughs> And your body carries the scars of your travels. Mm -hmm. Endor was Saul's final destination. My God. And we must realize that it will be our final destination too if we get on the road to Endor. Mm -hmm. Although Saul died in a battle the next day, Endor is clearly the end for him. Mm -hmm. The battle and his death are just postscripts to Endor. At Endor, the books are opened, and your story is told. Where you went, who you rubbed elbows with, what motivated you, where you are with God. This is the important, this is the most important part of your story. Amen? Amen. Don't let the books be opened while you're in Endor. In the 1700s, there was a preacher, I love this, and his name was Jonathan Edwards. And he was used by God to preach a sermon entitled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. In this message, he discussed man's slide into hell. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, understand this. Sorry. There are no mad dashes to get to hell. No. Amen? No. There are slow slides down a slippery slope. Mm. Huh. No. Jesus. Many people don't understand that they are on a slippery slope, sliding off towards indoor. Merrily they go along. It was a long, slow road. It takes a lot of us a long time to get there. Check this out. It took Saul 40 years to get to indoor. Right. Amen? Right. It wasn't overnight. That's why you can't tell me, oh, I went to bed last night and I woke up this morning and oh, it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. You were on your way the whole time, mm. whether you recognize. See, some of us don't realize or recognize when we get on the road to Endor. Mm. But I already told you, Endor is a place of rebellion and disobedience. So when you find yourself on that road, you're on your way to Endor. Amen? Right. <laughs> and Endor... Our shortcuts with God are revealed. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for shortcuts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do it the easy way. Nobody wants to do it God's way. We want the easy way. No. If you do it God's way, that is the easy way. Because mm -hmm. I hear the word of God declare through the mouth of Jesus, take my yoke upon you yes. and learn yes. of me for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. No, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whichever way it go, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But that's doing it Jesus' way. So why do we think that we can find an easy way in and of ourselves? Instead of doing it the way God said. Instead of going to Endor. Amen. Amen. God's going to show you all of the toll roads and all of the things that you did on your way to these shortcuts when he opens up these books. Mm -hmm. And all of us have to tolls and shortcuts. 
And some of us would rather not discuss them here in church, amen? Right, right. We prefer to keep them out of our conversations. Mm. Because, you know, we're presenting this persona to people, and we don't want folks to know the shortcuts and the shortcomings, amen? Right. <laughs> but when the books are open and our story is told, all of those things will come out and confront us. Yes, they will. And indoor, there will be no rationalization. No. You're not going to stand before God and rationalize why you did this or that. There will be no justifications. There will be no excuses, hallelujah, to oh, God, wow. for how we treated God and for how we treated others. Amen? Amen. Nobody returns from indoor. I want you to get this thing. It is an ending place. It is where we are confronted with the truth of God, where his grace is called and we have not answered. My God. God gives us grace and we aren't even grateful enough to receive it. Mm -hmm. And then we want to know how we ended up in indoor. Endor is a place of rebellion. I'm not going to be much longer. Saul never quite figured out how his life was supposed to be. No. Living life in the fast lane. He was so busy being the king. You can't be so busy that you don't submit yourself to God. Amen. You can't be so tied up in what's going on around you that you don't submit these things unto the Lord and say, Father, have your way. I'm the king. I can do this on my own. I don't need Jesus to show me how to do this. My I've got to figure it out. Really? My God. You figure it out then. No, all right. Some of us, just like Saul, are in open rebellion against God My because God. we don't submit. Mm -hmm. No wonder we see that Saul was always trying to kill David. Who's the David in your life? Hmm. Who is it that God has anointed who's going to replace you when you get on that road to Endor? Who is it? Where is your Endor? What Saul was doing was that he was really trying to thwart the will of God. Because, see, if he removed David, he figured he could remain king. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. He didn't want the women to be singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. He didn't want to hear that. And every opportunity, he tried to kill David. There was a constant power struggle between God and Saul. God was trying to pull Saul over here to him, and Saul was over here staying to himself because he knew better than God. I don't believe all that stuff in the scriptures. Somebody, somebody wrote that. Right? Yeah, somebody, somebody did. Wrote it. Yeah. Somebody did. Mm -hmm. I've heard that said time and time again. Oh, just some men wrote it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some men did write it. Holy men inspired by God. Yeah. I knew that Jerry was going to be <laughs> the troublemaker. <laughs> Here's the story. <laughs> Yes, men did write the word of God. Amen. The Bible tells us inspired by, by God. Amen. Over hundreds of years in different places scattered throughout the globe. But when you read it, it's all one cohesive story. And you cannot attribute that to anybody except God. We could not all go home and write a chapter and bring it all together and say, now let's make a book and have it all make sense. I dare you to do it. <laughs> so yeah, men did write it. Men wrote as God inspired them. They wrote down the mind of God in a book for us to live by. Yes. If you can't get with that, that's your it's your business. It's your business. It's not my place to try to force you to believe nope. that the word of God is exactly what it is. We're not here to convince. I'm just here to tell you what God said. Amen. You can believe it or you don't have to. Amen. Amen. But there will come a time when the book is open and indoor and your page is going to be read. Amen. Right. And that's going to be between you and God too. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that we must examine ourselves and ask these questions before we get to indoor. Okay. 
Don't think you're so high and mighty either because you know the word. See, let me tell you something. As far as Saul was away from God, God still allowed Saul to prophesy. Yes. So just because you fall out on the floor and speak in tongues and God gives you a word of knowledge, don't think that that makes you so such and much. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We saw in the story where the Lord used the jackass mm -hmm. to bring about his word. Okay. He'll use anything and mm -hmm. anybody. Even this witch at Endor. Yes. Can God use a witch? Yes. Uh -huh. For his purpose. Can God allow the witch to bring across the message? Yes. <coughs> yes, he can. And he did. <coughs> and that message spoke the end to Saul. Mm -hmm. Because what did Samuel say? Samuel told him, tomorrow you're going to be where I am. And he was short enough dead. Mm. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow you'll be where I am. <laughs> don't go looking for answers to questions if you don't really want to know the answer. My God. Amen. <laughs> there was always this constant power struggle. <clears throat> Saul was never willing to become a servant of the Lord as God had called him to. And instead, he tried to outpower God by trying to kill David. Mm -hmm. Saul tried to be his own man. Oh, how many times have I heard that? I'm my own man. My own woman. I decide what's going to go on over here. I decide. Oh, do you? Mm. Huh. You're on the road to Endor. Endor. There comes a time when we must all ask, who is running our lives? God or us? Are we following in the footsteps of Saul? Thwarting the will of God in our lives and those around us by always offering our opinions rather than the fact of the word of God. Mm. Everybody here got an opinion. Yes. Some of us got two and three. Mm. Amen. We got more opinions than we should. But don't offer me your opinion. I don't care to know what you think. I want to know what does God say. Mm. And if you can't tell me what God said, then go sit down. Because your opinion is not welcome. Yes. That's me. I'm not asking everybody to be like me. But I know one thing is for certain. I can stand on the word of God. Your opinion might change tomorrow. Yes. What you agree with today, you might disagree yes, with tomorrow. tomorrow. But God said, I change it not. No. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Give God a Oh, we got to stay off the slippery slope. Hallelujah to God. We can be slain in the spirit and we can prophesy and we can preach in tongues, but never really become the servant that God wants us to be. It's a matter of subtle rebellion. We might be standing here shaking our fingers at Saul, but we have to realize that we can be just like him. Amen? Right. We have to examine ourselves and ask ourselves these questions before we get to end over because once you're on that road, it is hard to stop sliding down a slippery slope. Oh my God. Saul was great at shortcuts. He often tried to get away with doing only half of a job. Oh my God. He tried to get to a witch and have her contact God for him. Somebody tell me how does that work? How you going to ask Beelzebub to contact God for you? Jesus. And the thing about it is Saul knew that God's spirit was far from him because he was on the road to Endor. He couldn't ask God. The word tells us that God wasn't even listening to him anymore. You know what it says in Psalms? Is it 68 and 1? If I regard iniquity in my heart, God does not hear me. Right. So he knew God wasn't listening because he knew about his sin. Amen? Yes. And he wasn't repentant. You no. Know. Woo! He tried to get a witch to contact God. Mm -hmm. How is that for a mixed up method of oh reaching God? God. Mm -hmm. Witches are demonic. Mm -hmm. Always have been, always will be. Amen. The law of Moses states that witches were to be killed, yet Saul used the devil in the form of a witch to get through to God. You see, he could no longer speak with God for himself. Amen. Because God had left him. This is very classic Saul, where the ends justified the means. Whew. Saul was unrighteous. 
in trying to get a word from a holy God and a righteous God. And to top it off, trying to do it by unholy and unrighteous means. Mm -hmm. Amen. My God. God had left Saul. And clearly, he was being judged. Because Endor is a place of judgment. Mm -hmm. Endor is also a place of regret. Mm. The road to Endor, brothers and sisters, is paved mm. with good regret intentions. and good intentions. Mm. <laughs> Both hope and faith are scarce commodities at Endor. Yes, they are. To have faith, one must have hope. But at Endor, all you will find is regret. Mm. Jesus. Saul was so overcome by regret that he fell to the floor and had to be coaxed to get up and eat. Didn't we read that? Mm -hmm. Now it was too late for him to shore up his relationship with the Lord. See, I want you all to understand that the Bible says that there will come a time when God will not strive with you. Mm, no. So don't think you got forever to get it together. Mm -hmm. That's not what it says. It says he's long-suffering and he's patient and his mercy endures. But there will come a time when God will say, hmm, never mind. Okay. No more waiting for tomorrow to fix things. Because mm -hmm. tomorrow is not coming. coming. Mm. There would be no more second chances for Saul. Mm -hmm. I'm going to push the pause button right there. And I'm really trying to get through this very quickly. I said, give me 10 more minutes. The Bible says in Genesis 6 and 3, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not be put up. Excuse me, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. Cut. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, man, they lived to be hundreds of years old. Methuselah was over 900 years old. But God said that's way too much time for them to just continue Mess to live up. in sin and just up. disregard what I say. So now I'm going to cut that thing. Cut. And then the Lord looked at it again and said they still don't get it with 120 years. Cut so it, when man. we see in Psalms 90 and 10, God says that the man's lifespan will be 70 years and 80 if he's strong in body. We did that ourselves. Because God said, I don't want to put up with them for 120 years. Jesus. Not listening to me. Yeah. I'm going to give them 80 years to get it right. <laughs> They'll right. get it right in 80 years. Okay. I'm done. They can be on their way to Endor. They got the road map. They know how to get there. Mm. Amen. Jesus. Saul may have stated that he'd make things right next week. I can hear him now. Next week I'm going to get it together with the Lord. I'm going to go in and apologize. Maybe next month. Or maybe after Christmas or whenever. But there would be no more time to make anything right. My God. The books are being opened and the story is being told. Hmm. A story of self-will and pride. A story which Saul would not want to hear. He couldn't even bear to hear his own story because it was a conflict of what it was he was telling people. Mm. How many of us find ourselves in that place? That if your true story was told, that story that you keep back from everybody, oh, people wouldn't think of you the way they mm. think of you. The truth be told, amen. Because we can, we good spin doctors, but we can spin some good stories about ourselves. <coughs> but let somebody mm -hmm. open up the books and tell the truth. And that's what was happening with Saul. The truth was being told, and it was a story that he didn't want to hear. Amen. And it was a story he didn't want to have anybody else hear. See, because he had been convincing himself all along how great he was. Amen. He was delaying the time to make things right while he was pushing this great image of himself on other people. What's going to happen when you come up against a situation like that? First thing out your mouth, I didn't have enough time. I was going to do it. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hmm. Amen. It's going to come a time when it's too late. Argue with God. God didn't give me enough time. God was being too hard on me. Let me tell you something. At Endor, it's always somebody else's fault. My God. Always. Always finger point when we get to Endor. Jesus told the Jews that God was like a hen calling to them and wanting to tuck them under his wings. Prophet told of God standing before them with open arms 
calling out to Israel all day long, but nobody answered. No one ever wants to see himself in that way, so we walk to Endor with our eyes blinded, never telling ourselves the truth. Oh, at places along the road to Endor, we have moments of clear vision. Amen. Right. We know we aren't walking with Jesus the way he really wants us to, yet there just doesn't seem to be the time or resources for us to slow down and turn around. Mm. Regret forms along the way to Endor because deep down we understand that we are all a little like Saul. We're waiting for the right time or the right circumstances in order to change. We're waiting for God to make the first move. Never realizing that he has been calling and calling to us, but we never took the time to listen. At Endor, we will wail and cry out because we will clearly see, as Saul did, that we knowingly and unhesitatingly walk to Endor on our own two feet. There will be no one else to blame but ourselves. Mm. Regrets, my friends, are abundant at Endor. Regrets over the prayers that we never prayed. Regrets because of the people we never told that we were sorry. Regrets over the little amounts of money and time that we gave to the Lord and his work. Regrets over how little we really gave to the body of Christ. Regrets over how we wasted much of our lives. Regrets over how little of ourselves we gave to God. Endor is a place of bitter tears spilled over our own sins. At Endor, we know we missed the mark, and now there's no going back. No. The road that doesn't lead to Endor, let me tell you about that one. There is good news. There is an alternative to taking the road to Endor. Amen. The road to heaven is the one that God wants us on. Amen. Right. It is the road that will take us into his presence and into his power. It is the road to divine protection and eternal life, although it may be filled with trouble. Mm -hmm. And it may be filled with trials. It is a road filled with rewards and joy, too. Yeah. Amen. 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 In the second epistle of Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, it is written, The Lord isn't slow to do what he promised, right. as some people think. Right. My God. My. Rather, he is patient for our sake. Yes, he is. He doesn't want to destroy anyone, but wants all people to have an opportunity to turn to him mm -hmm. and change the way they think and act. Mm -hmm. God wants us all to find this road and stay on it. Somewhere on the road to Endor, God will meet us and offer us another path. Mm -hmm. He will cry out in our hearing, and we will see him. <coughs> we will have little doubt about the voice, because the Bible says, for his sheep know his voice. Amen? Yes. He may tell us that we're being like Saul. Waiting to make things right, looking for the right time or the right circumstances. He may remind us that we are trying to be holy without putting in the real work and effort that it takes to live in holiness. Mm. Holiness is not easy. No, it isn't. You've got to put in the time to live holy. There are no shortcuts to holiness. Amen. Right. There's no buses and there's no taxes. Amen. Mm. We have to walk every single step of the way with God. Amen. Not ahead of God, not behind God, but with him. Amen. That is the only way for us to walk this road to holiness with God. Amen. Right. There is a time when the Holy Spirit will nudge and push you in the way that you should go. A road that leads away from Endor. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit as he changes your direction. Jesus went to the cross so that we don't have to go to Endor. His death was meant to keep us from missing out with God. And in conclusion, we must choose which road to take. The road to Endor or the road to heaven. Mm -hmm. Not just once. Mm -hmm. It must be a daily choice. Yes, it is. Because we choose the path that we're on every day. Amen. Every day. The road to Endor is a road full of self. But the road to heaven is a death 
to self. Mm. We must die daily in this walk to heaven. Mm. There is no other choice. Amen. Christ and his purifying touch must be our constant companion. We must lean on him if we want to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. Endor is the place where the story ends. It does for Saul at least, and it will for us if we travel that road. Endor is a word which can mean fountain of the dwelling. It can stand for the well of self-centeredness which exists in us all if we have not let the word of God or the blood of Jesus or the power of the Holy Spirit transform or convert us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Listen to that still small voice crying out your name, telling you that you don't have to go to Endor. You can choose another way. And I'll end with this scripture, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 8, from the God's Word translation. It says, as the Holy Spirit says, if you hear God speak today, do not be stubborn. Don't be stubborn like those who rebelled and tested me in the desert. We've heard it said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. If you hear the Lord today, take direction from him. Get off the road to Endor and get on the road that leads to life and eternal life. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.